first is really optimizing us to get the wheat deer combo, which allows us to take maximum advantage of the uh, of the granary. Speaking of though, I wonder if I'd changed my order around a little bit, I could have had a granary available to be built by now. Right? It would delay the acquisition of of the deer and probably means that my worker would be idle. But consider this, what if I changed the build order around? What if I'd gone scout worker? By the time the worker came out and improved the wheat and then the deer, I would probably have the technology and the cap the capacity to build a granary. Um, everything would be delayed a little bit, but we would also have an extra scout. I don't know, maybe we'll have to compare at that point. So, all right. I don't think we need a second worker at this juncture. I think the big, the big question is mostly going to be the monument, which is always always viable. Um, the culture is always good for getting those extra social things very quickly, not to mention expanding our borders. Uh, a warrior, a scout is still viable, um, although again, I think less so. I think the window for the scout, in my opinion, tends to be you either get it right at the beginning or you don't. Because by the time you get this sort of second chance at it, the extra movement speed of the scout is not quite as valuable. Although it is cheaper and there's a value there, but it's almost, uh, in my opinion, it's like, well, I'd almost rather have a warrior, because he can scout pretty well too, because they do have a base movement of two, and at this point it's buffing my military. Um, yeah, a second worker I don't think is justified, but a settler at this point is potentially justified. It's always a little risky to just build sort of a naked settler, although I could always recall my warrior and have him escorted. But it's early enough that the AI is almost certainly not going to declare war on me yet, and B, there are going to be very few barbarians running around loose. So I can probably sneak in a free settler, get a second city without having to worry about my defenses too much. On the other hand, you know, what's, what's the opportunity cost? Well, I'm not starting to build up my military early, so if I want to go on a quick military conquest, that's not an option. I'm not expanding my culture, which has all sorts of implications on everything, because especially social policies, they, they generate so many side effects, it's almost hard to judge. In this case, as a test, I'm going to go and go ahead and build a quick settler. It'll be a really good way to compare against some other kind of build. I don't know where we'll put them yet, uh, maybe over here or maybe down here. Both solid choices, but then we'll also see what the warrior will snoop out because in 14 turns he will have scouted this area as well. So I'm just going to move forward. What did we get? Plus one population. Awesome. We also discovered the Great Barrier Reef, so we get one free happiness. And if we work that tile, it's extraordinarily productive. Um, it's way over there, which means we literally have to settle right on the coast. But that is viable. Now, normally I would want to swing back to the right to continue my big circle, but because there's a definite possibility of settling right in this area to take advantage of the Great Barrier Reef, I'm going to go ahead and move to the left a little bit just to expose some more of this terrain. Okay, that's a little bit unfriendly. But I'm not actually concerned. I don't think they're going to attack at this point, and... It does mean we'd, we'd have to clear it out if we settled over here, because they'd probably send a never-ending stream of goons to <coughs> harass my improvements. Thank you, go away. Uh, we finished the forest actually far too quickly. Um, we have four more turns for trapping. How long does it take to build this? Three turns for a farm. I can move here, build the farm, and then be ready for trapping. I think I'll lose one turn in the move, but it's okay. And we do have actually horses to the north. And the coastline follows this way, so there's not actually a whole lot up there. Interesting. And, yeah, farm that up. <clears throat> okay, continue moving this way. We'll check this whole area of the coast. There's fish, marble, sheep, and the Great Barrier Reef, which doesn't show up as a little pop-up, but <clears throat> it's right here. Great Barrier Reef might even be more than one tile, although if it is, it's over here and we're not going to be able to reach it anyway. More fish, the horses. I don't... I haven't played a lot of Civ Five. I don't tend to value horses very, very highly, um, because I don't think the units they produce are that amazing, whereas, like, iron is, like, through the roof awesome. Although it doesn't hurt. Okay, so we've got trapping. Um, 
We can bombard already. Where the hell did you come from? Son of a bitch. Okay, you stop. You're farming. You've got to retreat into the city. That throws everything off. Uh, I can't actually engage this guy yet. Um... I suppose I can move into the forest here and then attack him next turn, pretty much regardless of where he goes, but what a pain in the ass. Didn't finish the farm, although we do have our, our, our tech, so we could just move out here and then finish the farm afterwards. That's incredibly irritating. Ah, oh, good, he went into open terrain, I guess to attack this half-finish improvement. We're going to be easily able to finish him off get a little bit of XP basically for free, although it did cost us a little bit of um, work with our worker. But now we'll just move up here, we'll finish the deer camp, because that does seem like a higher priority job. Pottery will finish in five turns, the settler will finish in seven, at which point we'll have a hard decision. Do we go straight into a granary, or do we build military units? Because at some point we're going to need them, because the computer's quite bloodthirsty. Not that we've met anyone yet, so I guess that's a good sign. Now it is a small Pangea, I believe, so it's inevitable that we will meet them and that there will probably be competition for space, which is part of the reason I like the idea of getting the early settler. Because if there's going to be competition for space, I'd rather have stuff already, but it also means that the computer's that much more likely to become aggressive to claim some of the space, especially if it can't expand on its own, because you've taken all the good spots, so you've got to balance it out. I think one fast city is almost certainly a no-brainer. I guess we can move here at, like, no cost, and then move up to the hill if we want. But I'll just go here instead, and then move north. Oh, another city-state! Holy cow! So there's no actual civs around us, just city-states? That's not bad for Seoul, actually. I think that's a good start for them. because, And I think Seoul may be better suited to a large map, because I think like they probably benefit from having a more peaceful builder strategy with lots of wonder spam than being all-out militaristic. Two city-states. Well, I'm going to touch this one and then go north. Hello, Vienna. But someone's already met them. Only 15 gold. Interesting. So there might be someone on the other side. Although, I can't I can't go further left. Oh, because... No, that's funny. You can't, like, leave your bounds too far, even though the map extends quite a bit further. Um... Yeah, I'm good with this turn. Bismarck! Hello! So there's nothing I can, I'm, I'm going to be able to do with him at this point. The AI is there, kind of jumpy when you first meet. Pottery's good. So you've got archers already? Well, that may have been an upgrade from a city camp. Can't actually take a look at your properties, huh? Alright, so we finished pottery. We're definitely going to want to build that potentially after the settler. After I say definitely. Now the question is, what do we build next? Well, there's a lot of options. Mining, um, hopefully we're going for the gold next yet. Yeah. 16 turns from now, we will be able to mine the gold. So... I don't think we need to rush the mining, because I don't think we're going to need it before 16 turns. So we could go calendar into mining, and that would allow us to take advantage of every single one of our resources in our capital. There's something to be said for that. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, at all. In fact, yeah. On the other hand, we could go writing, because the library is going to be really good for us. Uh, we could even potentially consider building the Great Library, which would be very, very strong. But I'm concerned that we're definitely going to want to build military before that happens. Archery is also incredibly important to defend ourselves with. I would much rather build a bunch of archers than a bunch of warriors. Um, or, you know, some combination of the two. So, actually, before we make a choice, let's make another save. And actually, I should have used a better nomenclature for this, because I want something like... Um, test one space. Oh, I can't put another space. Test, test one, turn twenty-four. I might put all these saves up. Whoa, no, don't. How do I cancel out of that move? All right. Uh, yeah, I might put all these saves up so someone can load up any one of these. Oh, I guess you'd need the Korean DLC. I didn't think of that. How are people going to test this if they don't have the right DLC? Oh god, I'm sorry guys. Uh, total spaz. Oh well, nothing we can do about it now. Um, yeah, short term, what is the most helpful? 
We definitely don't need sailing. I don't think we need to rush to the wheel. I think hooking up that gold is... Well, I guess gold is less critical in this game than in previous versions of Civ, because it generates the actual gold production, not commerce, which trades into science. So the mining's not even that critical. The calendar is not even that critical right now, because we don't even need the happiness yet. Okay, so I think I'm going to go writing. Because building the, the library will definitely assist us considerably. By the time it's built, we're going to be have at least size, at least population four, which means at least two extra beakers, not to mention the boost that Soul gets from creating science buildings. So that seems like a no-brainer. Seems. Might not be. And we close the fly out and go next turn. Pointy is sticks, so our military sucks, and Bismarck's actually quite good. Well, it helps that he's got a bow and arrow. Now, what do we want to do with our warrior at this point? I think I'm just going to swing him south, make sure to clear out this little area. Oh, I didn't actually talk to this guy. We can adopt a policy. So, that's a good question. Where do we go? Well, there's always the option of honor, which is a bonus versus barbarian. In fact, um, you know, there are barbarians. There's a barbarian camp over here that we'd want to take out. Plus different military bonuses. Okay. Liberty. I'm actually not convinced that Liberty is going to be a great choice because we are on a small map, so there's a limit to how many settlers we're going to want to produce. Um, you know, this general area here is probably the only thing we're going to have the opportunity to settle, which means, I suppose, potentially up to four extra cities, four expansions, which is not an inconsiderable number, but you know, how quickly do we want to rush to it? And what does this give us? Yeah. Lots of free culture. Production in every city. That's pretty good. Here, we get a bonus to wonders. Ah, oh, that's right. Which I think is going to be very good for Korea, since we want to build wonders in our capital. That's pretty key. The free culture building is always nice. Better defenses. Maybe. Especially if we're not going to be very moremongery, it becomes increasingly likely that we might be attacked, which makes this defensive bonus pretty nice. And extra growth is never bad in our capital. Our capital, we're going to want it to be big so it can build wonders faster. That's certainly good. And again, here, the bigger the population of our capital, the better. I'm, I'm likely to think that tradition's potentially the best thing for our build to date. So let's go with that. And I guess that's the end of this turn. May as well pop down here. Oh yeah, I still have to go up here, but we're here. I'll, I'll hit the mountain and then I'll go back up this way. Although it means that my worker, my warrior is not around to settle. Go finish the camp. So I'm going to go back here and finish that farm that I left behind. And here it is, Mr. Settler. Also, 